But I'm only one of like five teachers that use technology anyway, so they're not used to it. Okay, what was I doing? Okay, email. Let's go with the My Labs Plus again, because that way people that have not, never had it. My Labs Plus is another way of saying Course Compass and another way of saying My Math Lab. They're all the same thing. Okay, so if you hear me say Course Compass, I mean the same thing. This tells you how to log on to My Labs Plus. It tells you what to use. It tells you you have to get an access code. Now, if you have had this class before, Let's say that you wasn't into it last that semester or the teacher sucked or you had some outside things that happened and you couldn't take the final or whatever the case may be. Then you need to log on to your old your old username and password and it should prompt you or should say something like you are retaking this class or something like that. I don't know what it's going to say, but it's going to give you the option of clicking on class probably you need to click on this class because if you have taken this class before and you're retaking it, you do not have to pay for another access code. Only if you've taken this class before. And that's the way it is with all classes with My Labs Plus. If you've taken it before and you didn't finish it, or whatever the case may be, you should be able to log on with your old username and password, which is the same thing as this. It's your J Smith 13 and then your T number with a capital T. And it should prompt you and say, you're in a new course. Make sure the course, and we'll go over the grade book, and I'll make sure all of y'all's names are on there before we get started with anything. So you need to do that tonight. The next day, when there's a 21-day or a 14-day grace period, so that takes away the excuse of what? Oh, well, I couldn't pay for it, so I didn't log on. Well, that takes care of that right there. You don't need it. It's free for 21 days. I don't know about now. I don't know. This is summer. 21 days is for a 14-week. So chances are for a 10-week, it's probably going to be, well, 14 is to 21. One-third? No, two-thirds. So 0.67 times 10 probably six days, maybe seven days. Probably a seven day grace period. So don't, don't wait until seven and a half days. Go ahead and get logged on, okay? So you can get started so you won't have the excuse. And it'll save it. If you ain't able to pay for the access code the seventh day, it's not going to erase everything. It's going to keep everything and just when you get the money to get the access code, it'll take off from where you left off. So Okay, so that's that handout. There is a 1-800 number. I think it's 1-800-677-6337, but be careful because there's also, I called, <laughs> dialed the wrong number one time and got some dating service. So be careful. I think it's, I think this is the right number right here. Um, we should call it to see, Let's see right quick. I know that if you change the eights or the sixes, it changes it, so I'm going to check it right quick. I don't want to give y'all a long... Let's see. Oh my gosh, he's using his phone. Six, seven, seven, y'all are supposed to have a heart attack. Let's see what happens. It's working. Okay, that's the right number. <laughs> I think it's the 877-8337. That's the one dang old dot com, date dot com, or whatever, date on the phone, or whatever. I accidentally did 1-800-877-8337 one day. That didn't turn out very well. This is the help desk for Tri-County Tech. If you have an issue with your T number, if you have an issue with Logging on to My Labs Plus, Blackboard. Oh, I, have I said anything about Blackboard? No. What does that mean? I don't use it. Okay? If a teacher does not mention something, chances are that teacher doesn't use it. So I care less about Blackboard. 
Uh, only thing I care about on my 120s, the only thing I care about is my left plus because everything I do is in my left plus. I don't care about blackboard. All I care about is my left plus. If you have an issue with Tri County Tech, my left plus, uh, your username at Tri County Tech, your password at Tri County Tech, these are the people to call. Don't get attitude with them because they'll give you an attitude right back. Be nice, they'll be nice. This is My Labs Plus. Let's say you get to My Labs Plus and you log in and you can't remember your password, then you need to call these people. Okay? They can't help you with My Labs Plus. They can help you with Blackboard, with your username and password here at Tri County Tech, and any computer issues you have at Tri County Tech. My Labs Plus. That's who you call when you got an issue with them. Okay, peace. Yes, Hubert. Thank you, class. Y'all don't have to talk. Y'all don't want me to go good body on you and teach my about to go body. You don't want that. Or some of the other teachers, not this one. Okay, today we're going to start on page 527. And then about an hour later, you're on 623. And the voice hadn't changed at all. I don't see how people, I don't see how I keep after all. Can't handle it. All right. Now, why, Hubert, why do you write an information sheet about you? I do it for two reasons. One reason is because I used to have a, we used to play a game in class. We used to, I used to send out a, index card to everybody and you used to fill it out with six or seven categories. I put the categories on the board and y'all would fill them out and then you would turn them in to me and I would mix them up and I would pan them back out and you would read out what you got and then we would guess who it was. I love doing that. I love doing it until people just I would have to explain what the favorite color was and I would have to explain uh, I put, where are you employed? And then they would say, where I'm employed now or where I was employed last week? I just, I just gave up, okay? So I quit doing that. But I didn't quit doing this because uh, the reason I did it then is because I, I, think, I thought it was hypocritical for, some, for a teacher to just give you their name and phone number, which they didn't want you to memorize either one, and then they asked all this stuff about it, and that's why I did this. But another reason I do this is to give you all my contacts. So therefore, that takes away what? Another excuse of what? I didn't know how to get in contact with you. You know, whatever. I even give you snail mail. You don't have to use that. But here's my cell number. Best way to get in contact with me is my cell. And which form? Text. I would much rather get a text than a phone call because sometimes I cannot answer the phone call because of meetings. I'm on a tractor or I'm working with cows or pigs or chickens or whatever. Or I'm surveying in the woods or name it. On a, on a bulldozer, whatever. Or I'm in a meeting here or I'm, or I'm helping somebody with office hours or something. So texting is real good, just like email is real good because I can always send you a text or send you an email without having to shut off everything else that's going on. Okay? Please don't send me a text saying that you're not going to be here tomorrow because your cat died and you got to go home and you got to give your cat some some kind of burial or something. And you, I don't need to know all that, okay? Just, just main things, okay? Like, uh, vacation, you don't. You can just tell me after class if you go on vacation. You don't have to tell me 15 weeks ahead of time. You can just tell me like the day before you leave. It's no big deal. You got your syllabus. You know what I covered today. You know what I'll be covering the next week. You also got what? The videos. The videos will tell you where we are. So you don't have that excuse either. There's my cell email. The reason I call it cell email, I know I go to Gmail and pull it up on the computer. But the reason I call it that is because it does come directly to my, so does all my other emails, even though you can't get 
uh, let's see, what did, what did Hillary Clinton say? I, 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 I opened a new account because I wanted all my somethings to come, all my emails to come to one, I don't know what she said, but she said something that wasn't correct because I got five emails coming to this thing. I don't know what she said. She said something that just didn't make any sense. But anyway, some of y'all don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Home email, I rarely check that one, but sometimes my phone goes off when it does. There's my, my office email. It'll come up and say, you have an office email, okay? Because I know that it's coming from work. I can see if I'm fired or not. And office, there's my office number. And it even gives you what? <coughs> Directions to how to get to my office. How many excuses have I taken care of there? About four or five. I didn't know how to get to your office, bull. I didn't know what your office number was, bull. I didn't know your phone number, bull. It's all there. And why did I go through all this? One, let you know that I used to ride dirt bikes where this campus used to be. If anybody in here, Miss Coward, I'm picking on you. You remember when this was nothing but pine trees? And we used to ride dirt bikes. There's a bunch of hills out here. We used to ride dirt bikes out here. And uh, when I wasn't playing football or track or wrestling, I was riding dirt bikes out here. And uh, I lived three minutes away out here in the MacLeys community. It's been the MacLeys community for the last hundred years, but now that MacLeys School is there, it's MacLeys. I guess MacLeys sounds too country. And now it's MacLeys. The man that started Macaulay School back in the late 1800s, late, I can't remember, 1900s, yeah, the early 1900s. His name was Henry Macaulay, and that's the way he pronounced it, his name. He called himself Macaulay, but I guess that's not good enough. Macaulay's people. Grew up on a dairy farm. Now we got beef cattle on it, run hay on off of it. Anything I pretty much grow on it, I'll try to except for legal substances. I don't grow legal substances. But uh, went to Tri County Tech, went to West Side right down the street. Went to Tri County Tech. Took me four years to get a two year degree. Took me nine years to get a four year degree. Now none of y'all would know what that's about, but it took me a while. So there's a little bit about me. I still do that mainly because of this. And mainly because it lets you know that I didn't grow up in Connecticut and graduate high school at 16 and went to college and by the time I was 18 got out of college. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. Because well, I sucked at math, believe it or not. And that's that. And let's go ahead and look at anything else. Class courtesies. Very important. In 20 plus years, I'd say 21, close to 21 years. Let's say 21 times 3 is what? 60, 63? 63 semesters. And 63 times 4 is 252. So I've taught 252 classes plus in the last 20 years. You know how many? Well, 252 times the average of 20 because sometimes I have classes like this. Sometimes I have classes with 30. So 252 times 10 is 2520. 2520 is 5,000 students, roughly. You know how many students I've had to ask to leave my class? Anybody want to take a guess? Shut up. You took this class before. You had my class before, not this class. Three. I want to take a guess on how many of them were female? Nope. Yeah. One. Other two were male. And the and the first two has been at the Pendleton campus. That's been over five years ago. The last one was fall semester. It was a girl. That's the one that bashed me on. She she didn't bash me one time. She bashed me like four times because it was the same person that wrote it. But anyway. Um, that's what I was told. Um, she 
bit jiha. I got tired of repeating myself. I would go over a problem, and it would be like five minutes after I went over that problem, she would say, how'd you get that number? What number? That number on the previous problem. See, I was messing up with her Facebook. She was on Facebook while she was supposed to be listening in class. And that's why. I, and to this day, I don't like computers in classroom. I don't mind iPads. I don't mind. I don't mind if you're actually doing yourself on your cell phone. I don't mind that as long as your cell phone is down where I can see it. Uh, pads, notebooks, and uh, what do you call it? Tablets. They're okay because they lay flat. I don't like something that I can't see. If I see a notebook and it's like this, I'm gonna come around there and see what you're doing because it's just rude. And that's what this. I've never three now. Three out of 5,000. Somebody do the math. What's three out of 5,000? I have no idea. But three out of 5,000 is a very good... The first two, the first guy, he was just a social misfit. He was just one of those people that laugh 15 minutes after you tell a joke. You ever met one of those people? And when they laugh, they laugh like 15 seconds after something funny has happened. They just... They're social awkward. They're awkward. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Well, anyway, I just threw him out of class because he was just, just, he was just messing up class, making the class very uncomfortable. The second guy was a caveman, not just a regular caveman. He was an ultra caveman. He came with his girlfriend and took classes with his girlfriend, whether he needed them or not, so he could watch her. Yeah, and he finally got on my nerves by saying, you don't need to do it that way, you do it the way I showed you. And when he told his girlfriend that, I turned around and I said, you can leave. And he left, but before he left, he said, come on. He told his girlfriend, I, I wanted to say, why don't you snap your fingers a little bit like a dog. He said, come on, let's go. And she said, no. And boy, he got red in the face. And I said, please leave, we're on call security. And he left. And to this day, she... She thanks, she thanks me for that day because after that she broke up with him. And uh, she now, she, she, I talked talk to her on Facebook and everything. She's uh, an intern with a senator in Washington now from South Carolina. So she's doing good. But I don't know where she'd be if she's still with him because he was an altercated man. But the other guy, I mean, the girl, she just, she just didn't like me, I guess. I don't know what it was. But anyway, I treat students the way I want to be treated. Mr. Bright, would you say that's true? Miss mm -hmm. Coward? I don't I don't pull any punches. I don't want any punches pulled on me. I, I I do not like disrespect. Okay? You know, I'm an old country boy, so I do respect people. And I went to the Marine Corps and came out of the Marine Corps. I, I like respect. Okay? So when you are texting in class and I'm teaching, that is disrespectful. Period. First time I'll say something, didn't I say something about texting in class? That means I have seen you texting between your legs. Okay? People, you don't think somebody's going to know what you're doing like this? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Now, what about texting? You see me texting, you see me use a phone. Do I go into ballistics, Mr. Bright, when your phone goes off in class? No. I don't even, I don't, you don't even register. I just keep on going. But I do ask that if it's important, now there's three numbers that will come up here that I will have to leave and answer. One is my mama, even though I give her my, I give her my schedule. She don't read it. She just calls. Okay? Then there's my daughter. My daughter is 17. And she is at Westside, and she's either calling because she's in trouble or she wants Zaxby's for lunch. And then my eight-year-old will either call because he's in trouble or he's, he's done something he ain't supposed to, which means he's in trouble. He grabbed, he grabbed the, uh, what do you call the resource officer, grabbed his weapon last year. So I had to go on that. He didn't grab it and pull it out. He just grabbed it and wiggled it just because somebody dared him to do it. So that was a major thing. We, we have a major conference on that. So if MacLeese calls, I'll have to answer. And if Westside calls and it's not a request for Zaxby's, I have to answer it. 
And then my mother calls, but how do I do that? Well, it's a text. I will say, excuse me, and I'll go out there and I'll text. Usually, I'm going to get by with texting them while you're working on the problem. That's not disrespectful. If I'm up here talking on the phone or if I'm up here talking to a student and I'm not teaching, you can do whatever you want to. Just don't be loud and obnoxious. Because I am not teaching. I am not talking. Think of it like this. Let's say that Mr. Bright came up to me after class and was asking me how to do number 14 on the test. And he said, and why he said, he said, Hubert, I did this, I did this. And while he's talking, I pick up my phone and start texting. What is that? Rude. Say again. Rude. It is. Now what's the difference in me doing that to him and you texting while I'm teaching? What's the difference? There is none. So don't do it. Now that hallway is just like that highway out there. You can't park in this parking lot without a TCTC sticker. But you can park in the middle of that road out there all day long without a TCTC sticker. When you come into my class, you follow my rules. You go in the hallway, you can text, you can talk, you can have a fight. I, we had a student have a knockdown drag out with her boyfriend over furniture. And everybody in, everybody in the whole hall was listening. I mean, the doors closed and they were going at it. And he was, she was giving him what for? All over furniture. But she was letting everybody know, I mean, you can do that if you want to. But all I ask is that you be courteous. And I try to be the same way. Texting and cell phone usage. Now, some of your teachers are not going to be that understanding. Some of your teachers are just fanatics. But I think it's hypocritical for me to have a phone up here and it go off and y'all have one. I mean, I just don't think I should say anything. I know the other teachers, they don't have a cell phone. You're right. Attendance. All right, and make sure you get this down. Okay? Everybody got that? But our federal government, right now, the only thing on their priority list right now is to crack down on the three or five students a year that take their check and don't come to class. You know, we don't have any problems with our borders with Canada or Mexico. We don't have any problems there. We don't have any foreign policy territory problems. We don't have any domestic problems like people rioting. But we are going to crack down on these financial aid criminals. So financial aid made us start taking attendance. As soon as you cross that threshold, you're here. You turn around and go downstairs and work on a test, that's fine. If you go to another class and meet with another instructor, that's fine. As long as you cross the threshold, you're good. Now, you had some issues with attendance because you're a high school student. Any other high school students? Okay. If you have issues, it's not a big deal. If you go on vacation, it's not a big deal. Just make sure that you stay, as long as you stay in cohesion with the class, your grades, boom, 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 A, B, A, B, B, A, C, C, they stay above a C average and we shouldn't have a problem. But don't come ask me for any favors if you've got like a 52 average and you haven't been in the class at all. I don't drop anybody. Because that's extra what? Paperwork. I don't do it. Now, they, you, now, if you are absent and you don't come to class, you're going to get a bureaucratic email from, from the bureaucrats that say, in order to be successful in your class, you need to be in class. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you need to be in class. You know if you know the material or not. If you know the material and you need to go do something, come in here, write me a note, Put it on the plate. No, do not put it up here. You got to see me. I got to see you cross that threshold because that way you are physically here, and then I can count you here, and then you can go on about your business. Okay? I don't want anybody here that don't want to be here because it makes class uncomfortable. Okay? And if you do have a 15-week uh, vacation, then we need to talk because you're going to pretty much you need to sign up for my online class. All right? 
these are just some typical things I hate and some things I like. So, uh, what I like about a class, did y'all see that? Interaction. That means talk. Okay. That means if I ask y'all a question, y'all say yes, no, uh, maybe. Okay. Thank you, Hubert. You're welcome, class. Calculators. This is a 120 class. We do not need calculators until chapter three, and you can get by with a TI 30, I think. Um, it suggests TI 83. Now, if you don't, if you have a Droid, you can go to Wabbit EB, go to Play Store, and go to Wabbit EMU. Wabbit W A B B I T. Wabbit like Westerly Wabbit. Wabbit. Wabbit EMU. One word, and you can download a app that looks like the TI eighty three for your calculator. The iPhones they don't have it. They did have it until uh, until Wabbit EMU dropped it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I don't know what happened. But there is some kind of graphing calculator on it. But you do you have to do the search. And if somebody will get that for me, I will make sure I write it down. But on the Apple, whatever you call it, iPhone, you have to go and do a search for a calculator. I think it's called calculator app or something. But make sure it's like a TI-83 or above. But if you got a Droid, you can download it for free. Uh, TI, yes, sir. I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry. That's all right. You're gonna fail. Um. My colleague I mean, is TI Inspire, and Inspire. it works. Um, the only issue is I think there's a software issue with the um, sine, cosine. Uh, That's fine. You don't need that in here. All you're going to need in here is your probability functions, which are under math. Right. So, and it says probability. So go under math and probability, and that's what you're going to use. I will show you three ways in here. I will show you by hand. I will show you by calculator. And I will show you by spreadsheet. Okay? Because some people can't afford to go out and buy a calculator, so they can use a spreadsheet. Now, I do not use the spreadsheet because y'all have to use a spreadsheet. I'll get like that chick wrote on my thing. That makes it makes you use the spreadsheet, which is confusing. Mr. Bright, have I ever made anybody use a spreadsheet in your class? I've never made anybody use it. Just lies. Just lies. Anyway, I do the spreadsheet on the board because it's organized. And it's not me writing all over the place. That's why I use the spreadsheet. And I make the and all the all the characters are the same height, the same width, and I can get a whole lot more done on this one whiteboard than me drawing all over these whiteboards. So that's why I use the Excel spreadsheet. And I will tell you how to use the formulas on the Excel spreadsheet if you don't have a TI eighty three. So therefore, you don't have to go out and spend money on a TI eighty three. If you still want a TI-83 and you can't do the application, try it on the iPhone. And if you don't like that, then try to borrow one from somebody or share. Okay? Okay. Y'all have to remind me what time? 2.30, right? Class 2.30? Huh? Well, we'll stop at 2.30 because I have to pick up my son. I get my son every other week. So, um, that... That'll tell you when we go next week. Y'all will get out of class early. And I'll probably let y'all have 2.15 because it's just at Mac. McClays. <laughs> have to go to McClays to pick him up. All right, yes, sir. Um, one more thing. Um, I'm you only get one question per class. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. But um, I'm taking Miss Rainey's AP Chemistry class and for a while we're basically in um, at the Tell her that my class is more important. Okay. You tell her that. See what she says. Okay, Go sure. ahead. Um, I have a reactivity series demonstration for AP chemistry that I, uh -huh. I need to do, and I believe it's around like 2.18. That's it. No big, no no big deal. No. Just remind me whenever. Yes, sir. No big deal. Thank you. No, I won't condemn you. First of all, you're taking Mr. Rainey. Second of all, my class is more important. Okay. I'm sure to pass that along. She, she, she told you to say, she told you to. The, did you tell her whose class she were taking? I did. She said she's a text you a couple times about me. Yeah, she has. Yeah. yeah, she said you're a loser. So I should tell you. Yeah. All right, next.
Uh, I think that's it except for one thing, and that is Hubert's ideologies. That's where I have all my disorders. When I graduated track, when I graduated track, when I graduated Westside, you know how you're, you know how you're like ranking. I was like 356 out of 370. Okay, you ever wonder about that? If you're ranked the last person in the high school and that person is the last and, and that high school is the last ranked in the state and you're the last ranked state in the in the United States, you're the dumbest person in the United States. You ever thought about that? That'd be pretty sad, wouldn't it? Let's say if you were let's say during the year that I was three hundred and seventy, let's say his name was John Smith, and South Carolina was ranked last in education and Westside was last in the South Carolina, then John Smith would be the dumbest person in the United States. <laughs> makes you think. <laughs> but it also makes you think, why don't glue stick to the sides of the bottles then? <laughs> anyway, I did not do well. I'll tell you my story. The reason I didn't do well is because my eighth, seventh grade algebra teacher, Miss Brenda Bradbury, she was the worst teacher you could have. Worst. And after my no, eighth grade, eighth grade, my eighth grade year after that, my math went. And the reason I'm telling you this is again to give you a little bit of insight on how I teach. Um, I was terrible in math. I had to start with fractions when I started in Tri County. I had to start in what's called pre-algebra. That's where I started. Actually, I started in basic math. It was called math essentials. They didn't want to call it basic math because it made everybody feel like dummies. So they called it mathematics essentials. That's where I started. And I got a four-year degree. Now, I'm not doing that to compliment myself. I'm telling you that because I'm hard-headed. All it takes to be able to do math is a hard head. That's all it takes. Now, what do you what if you make A's? What if you make A's? That means you got a hard head and you're smart. But I'm just telling you, I ain't smart. I'm just hard headed. And I got a math degree and I started with fractions. So I don't want to feel like hearing all that crap about math is not my subject. I don't want to hear it. I really don't want to hear it. I think all of us suffer from one of my disorders. I had to change the attitude because I offended somebody with the other word, which means donkey. How do you offend somebody with don't? But anyway, lazy attitude disorder, whining attitude disorder. I did not have whining, and I did not have deadhead disorder. Because I don't, I think deadheads ought to be shot. But anyway, deadhead disorder, stubborn disorder, I suffered from that. Suffered from redneck disorder, and I suffered from lazy disorder. That's my, those, those were my disorders. And uh, you can do it. Ain't no big deal. And that's the way I teach. I teach like that. I teach like a student. Uh, I still remember some of the things, some of the 